Welcome to the Center for Threat Informed Defense's Leadership Spotlight. My name is Maggie McAlpine. I'm the Cyber Engagement Lead for MITRE Ingenuity Center for Threat Informed Defense. And today we have with us Joel Spurlock. Joel? Hi, my name is Joel Spurlock. I am a Senior Director at CrowdStrike, focusing on efficacy, and I lead the engagement with MITRE for Center for Threat Informed Defense. Fantastic. Thank you, Joel. So just to get started, could you please give us a short description of the project you collaborated with the center on and what kind of industry challenges that it addresses? Yeah, certainly. So this engagement was around the top attack techniques. MITRE has delivered the entire cybersecurity industry a major boon with attack. It's a taxonomy. It describes malicious behaviors. It's basically given us a Rosetta Stone that lets everyone talk about and measure and uh, understand adversary behavior in a common way. We're not speaking different languages all the time. We're now all speaking the same language when we talk about security. But the challenge is that attack is a big space. It, they started with endpoint, they have IC, industrial control systems, they cover public cloud. One of the biggest market problems in cybersecurity that we face is that there aren't enough people who know about cybersecurity. And so given a very big space with attack and all the attack behaviors and a limited resource, how do organizations adopt attack into their security operations and build strategies and improve their defense? This is basically the problem that the top attack techniques starts to address. With that in mind, can you go into a little bit more depth about how a top attack techniques solves this industry problem? How does it do it and how does it cut through the noise? Certainly. What the top attack techniques project does is it delivers a key methodology that enables an organization to prioritize their defense around attack based on their maturity and their security controls. One of the components of the top attack techniques project was to develop that methodology. And it includes three key components. Um, the first component is prevalence. This one's pretty obvious. Almost every top list of techniques or TTPs that a, an organization presents usually takes into account prevalence. And it's obvious because if the bad guys are using it, we want to use include it in our prioritization. The second two are a little bit less obvious, but makes a lot of sense when you pull this together. Choke point. So in the case of choke point, this takes into account the dependencies between techniques and identifies where you can disrupt to prevent threat actors from achieving their objectives most effectively. The third is actionability. So this is essentially if an analytic or a security control can be applied against the technique, it's going to have a high amount of actionability. Whereas if a technique doesn't have much you can do and it's just informational, it would have a low actionability. So a great example of this, when you want to take into account prevalence, actionability, and choke point, is techniques around lateral movement. If an adversary can't get off the first device, they're unlikely to achieve their objective. So you can put energy into defense there. And based on the intelligence data that we have, it's clear that remote services is a key technique. It's something that adversaries use to move laterally once they've acquired valid accounts, and you can see all the dependencies that exist there. Conversely, things like encrypted HTTP traffic or screenshots will fall way down the list. This is a common behavior. HTTPS is majority of browser traffic, which is also commonly used for uh, command and control activity. They are neither choke points or highly actionable, which means that they're less useful in crafting a defense, since you want to put less focus on them. In summary, the Top Attack Techniques project allows you to prioritize that set of techniques and tactics and allows you to prioritize your security validation. Use that limited resource of the red teams and the IT teams that are helping to improve your security posture, and they can focus on the techniques that will maximize a posture that disrupts adversaries. Fascinating, Joel. So with all of that in mind, how is CrowdStrike, how is your organization leveraging and applying this work? That's a good question. CrowdStrike leverages the uh, Top of Techniques project for thought leadership and education. We work with public testers to help identify what success looks like and how security solutions should be evaluated, what techniques are important, what security controls should be covered. We also use this heavily with customers to give them an insight on where to prioritize their efforts and how to operationalize attack. And frankly speaking, detecting everything with an alert and blocking on it is bad for security. Every alert takes valuable SOC analyst time. And as I noted in the opening, analyst time is a limited resource and some of the most valuable time in cybersecurity. You want your SOC analysts spending energy on things that the stop breaches, not on spurious alerting. 
We want customers and testers to focus on what success looks like when they're building out their security operations. If a red teamer expects blocking or detecting on all techniques or is trying to treat all techniques equally, they're, the outcome is they're going to create a lot of noise. Sometimes attack surface reduction is the right answer. Sometimes it's threat hunting. Sometimes we need a new security control enabled that it isn't enabled. Um, it could be an alert or prevent, and it could be even improving your security posture by changing some policies around accounts and principles of limited privilege. This project becomes a really excellent tool to enable that conversation and drive forward that understanding and, uh, and ultimately enable people to prioritize their activities to get better security outcomes. So much for your time today, Joel, and for taking part in the Center for Threat Informed Defense's Leadership Spotlight. My pleasure, Maggie. Thank you.